Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Thank you for being here. In today's video, we are going to be coping two and seven eighths pipe to be flush with one side of this four and a half inch pipe. We're gonna be using seven tools with these seven different steps that I've broke this down into. Uh, take notes and or reference back to this video. This procedure, if you will, or this process will work on several different uh, custom saddles, if you will, or custom uh, pipe saddles when it comes to fence or anything. This process should work for, for most of it. You know, I use a string line and a tape in my eyeball all the time. Before we get started, I did want to let you know that we are offering 20% off of our pipe fence course and the quick rig course. All you got to do is go to our website, arosswelding.school and at checkout, punch in the discount code DOWN20, all caps, DOWN20, and you will get 20% off of your purchase. If this is your first time hearing of the sale, we did start this sale two days ago. In the future, if you want to get notified whenever the sale first starts, you can get on our email list there at arosswelding.school or another term we use is newsletter. All you got to do to get on that list is punch in your name and email. They're on the homepage of the arosswelding.school website and that will put you on the list and we will send you an email anytime we put the courses on sale or anytime we come out with a new course or anything else that we have going on with the Aros Welding Trade School. Again, that's aroswelding.school and the discount code is DOWN20, all caps. All right, so like I already mentioned, seven different tools, string line, tape measure, soapstone, hand torch, template, or any way to make a straight cut. So this is the most simplest way. You don't have to have a chop saw or a band saw, but that's why I wanted to throw this tool in there. But if you have a chop saw, you can use a chop saw, band saw, zip disc, doesn't matter. And then some template material. Oh, and lastly, your four and a half inch grinder. I often use a quarter inch disc, quarter inch thick, or a sanding pad, like a 40 grit sanding pad, but they are a little bit more expensive than a grinding disc. So grinding disc or a four and a half inch sanding pad. All right, so the first step is take your string line, wrap it around your, well, in this, yeah, we better do it down here. We got one more rail to put in. I'm putting five in total right here. We got one more to put in. I wanted to go ahead and make a video out of the deal. Hopefully it is helpful. So wrap your string line around. Same thing on the other side. Make sure your string line's pretty snug. Once you got your string line up, the next thing you wanna do is cut a test piece. So just 10, 12 inches long, doesn't matter. Make sure it's a straight cut. Again, you can use a chop saw, doesn't matter. Just make sure it's pretty square cut. Step three is we're going to eyeball this piece of pipe, making sure it's in line with this string line. So we've got our fairly straight cut here. We're gonna put it up against here and we're gonna get up yonder and we're gonna make sure that it's all the way to the outside of our string line and then make sure it's in line this way. I'm being dramatic here, but you get the idea. We want the edge of this piece of pipe parallel with that string line. And also making sure your piece of pipe is moved over this way in the same plane as the edge of this four and a half. So this edge and this edge needs to be in the same plane. You can do that. It's hard to get on camera, but you, you can do that by eyeballing moving your your head this way until the edge of this piece of pipe becomes a straight line that's and then hold your head or your eyeball still and make sure this is in the same plane i hope that makes sense but so third step is eyeball step number four is take your tape measure and measure your gap right here so here we got roughly an inch maybe a little over so I'm gonna get, I'm gonna go an inch, and then uh, if I need to do more, I can do more. But I'm gonna go with an inch for these particular two sizes of pipe. Make your measurement. Take your template. This is where you really do need a template because you don't want to cut this. You just want to make a straight line all the way around. You could also do do this with your template material pipe wrap I'm calling it template material but pipe wrap whatever you got to do to get a straight line and while you have this on here you can actually mark your halves 
You can also eyeball this. You don't have to have a template. In fact, I'm going to have to eyeball the, the next two, but the way I eyeball these quarters, I call them quarters because like looking at a piece of pie like we learned in math class, you know, you look down, I always mark the ends like so, and then eyeball about, you know what I mean, I can eyeball the opposite ways, but all we want to do here is get our rough quarters just because this will keep us doing neater work if that makes sense whenever you go to eyeball everything so now that uh, you have your reference line back here next thing you want to do is again with a chop saw or with a torch you want to connect the longest point of your pipe to your your one inch back so Again, I'm just eyeballing it and so once you get that rough line in there you can set this in your chop saw and get your chop saw lined up on it or you can do what I'm gonna do today which is cut it with a torch so step four was measure measure your gap which is that one inch in our case here. And step five is miter. Miter, another word is just cut your angle. This angle that we're fixing to cut, that's step five. Take your grinder, clean that up, and then we'll move on to step six. All right, we got her cleaned up. We got us a good angle on there. Step six is again, get it lined up. And see my quarter mark up here, that one of the reasons why I put that because I'll make sure that's rolled directly on top again just using my eyeball line it up the string line and then step six is grind where it's touching so in this case it's about a half inch either side of that top mark so I'll take my soapstone mark here mark there roughly a half inch on each side and I'll roll it to the other line that we already have and do the same thing half inch half inch and then, like I said step six is literally grind until it fits grind where it's touching until it's fit so this is the most important part but all that prep work got us to this point here once you get your piece fitting real nice the next thing you're gonna want to do is make you a template of an old pipe wrap I always try to put uh, one straight edge on you know a quarter and then uh, just trace the inside with this old soapstone here and cut her out with this old scissors sitting behind me here. Went ahead and marked where this piece met like so, so all this, I'm just gonna make this a straight line and then I'll cut this off and go from there. Kev, is that you out yonder? What do you think, brother man? Kev's a, one of our barn cats. He's usually sleeping during the day. I don't know what he's doing. 
roaming around on this beautiful day. Come on, hello. Beautiful, beautiful day. All right. There he is. There's old Kev. For those of you that ain't seen him, Kev, don't be rude now. Need to say hi to the audience now. There you have it. Once you got your template made, it's time to kick back, drink a little coffee, and then go to town on your project. The hard part is done. Now I will add two more things here that I learned through putting in all these rails. It took me three tries to get it fitting good because the first two that I, well, I'll show you right here. The first two that I fit up, one was up here and it's got a weld in it already. Same with over here. But uh, you can see down here, there's a little gap here and a gap over here, which isn't a big deal. I mean, you can, you can uh, fill that gap pretty easy just like we did up here, no big deal. But I wanted to get it even better. That's always my goal when fitting up pipe fence is to make each one even that much better. So what I ended up doing, well, let me back up. The first two that I did, I ended up having to make it a quarter inch shorter than my inside measurement. So I just measured the inside of pipe and inside of pipe, and then it ended up being about a quarter inch shorter to be able to fit in here, you know what I mean? But after whittling on two of them, the third one, which is this one here, you can see it's tighter right here because this two and seven eighths pipe comes over the halfway part of this four inch. So therefore it needs to be a touch. I mean, just a, like a 16th or an eighth longer right there. So as you can see, this one fits a little bit better. It actually stayed up there by itself. What is up Kev? What are you doing today, brother man? Huh? But yeah, it actually stayed up by itself, which I was pretty impressed with myself, but so to sum it up, those are the two tips that I learned putting in these rails is all in all an eighth inch shorter than the actual measurement because whenever I measure them, I measure from this, the shortest side to the shortest side using our template that we made. So an eighth inch shorter and then essentially adjust your template. So I literally took some scissors and I, let me see if we can see it right here. I mean, this is a very minute, detail but check it out i literally made a mark here and made a mark here because after grinding on <clears throat> them first couple of rails or actually that that third one i was having to grind more of a belly in right here because that's where it was touching that's the whole key with fitting any custom angle just like the branch test on pipeline is grind where it's touching because you want that you want it to not touch you want the rest of it to touch so you got to grind where it's touching so once I learned that on that third rail I was able to come in with this template and mark roughly right in here and then roughly right in here and then I literally took scissors and trimmed off just about a sixteenth right in here so you can't hardly see it but this template has a little it comes up right here just like I said that sixteenth right in here but that makes it fit that much better over there. It's the little things, it's the little bitty details that make a big difference. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and cut, make these two cuts. Well, get our measurement, check our measurement, make these two cuts, grind them, get them fitting good. And I'll see if I can get this last rail to hold by itself like I did that one. I wasn't able to do it on the fourth one, but I was able to do it on that third one. So, time lapse, please. Staying up by itself, but but it's not uh, in far enough. Got to go in just a little bit, so I got to do a little more whittling. 
and uh, see what happens. Eyeballing, then whittling. Eyeball the cut, then whittle. Yeah, it ain't gonna stay, but it does fit good now. Dagnabbit. We'll get her tacked and then we'll look at it. Not too bad. Tiny gap there in the ear, but I mean, there's a little gap here, but it's touching right here in the throat versus this one. Not too bad. This side looks pretty good. Two and seven eighths coped to match one side of four and a half inch. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something. I know I learned something. I learned something every time I saddle a custom. Uh, angle or custom fit if you will when it comes to pipe i enjoy doing custom fits like this this kind of trial and error thing comes natural to me i truly enjoy it uh, let me know in the comments if there's any other uh, custom pipe angle or saddle that you would like to learn about and i will write it down on my video list and maybe i could do a video about it in hopes that it helps you better your uh, fitting skills when it comes to, to pipe saddles and whatnot um, like I said, it's something I really enjoy and I love helping others by way of these videos. And uh, like I said at the beginning of this video, check out our pipe fence course there at our website, arosswelding.school and the quick rig course. There in the pipe fence course, I go over all the nitty gritty details about how to build pipe fence. I mean, from sourcing material to locating underground lines, uh, business aspects of building pipe fence, not just the hands-on stuff. So if you're looking to build your own pipe fence, maybe add it to your arsenal of uh, skill sets in your welding business, or maybe you're a DIY welder and building pipe fence would become an asset on your farm or your property or whatever that looks like. Uh, check out that pipe fence course, save you some money until midnight tonight. That's when the sale ends on the pipe fence course and the quick rig course. For 20% off of your purchase, make sure and punch in the discount code DOWN20, all caps, save you 20%. Thanks for being here. We love you guys. We appreciate all your support. And remember, learn something every day.